Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this dinosaur of a steam locomotive. This is an old uh, 280 steam locomotive. I uh, picked this thing up at Larkspur Line train store during their Boxing Day to New Year's sale. I was really fascinated by this locomotive. It's just so vintage looking. I believe it was a kit. Uh, the loco itself just weighs a ton, actually. It has a uh, lead core, so uh, yeah, it's quite a hefty locomotive. But uh, anyway, the thing I was most surprised about was this thing actually does run. Um, I uh, gave it some power, and it did start up. Now, uh, it's probably been sitting for, I'd say, maybe 50 or 60 years. So uh, we're going to uh, try to re-lubricate it and sort of just clean out little things like this bit of dust here. And uh, hopefully we'll have a uh, fine runner by the uh, end of the episode. Also, uh, I'm sure some of you have noticed that... Uh, I'm recording this a little bit differently than usual. Um, I just think that, uh, cause you know, some people want to follow these videos to uh, do work on their own locos that uh, this type of view might give people a slightly uh, better perspective to uh, see exactly what it is I'm doing. So I'm gonna try it out. Let me know what, uh, what you think in the comments. Anyway, let me test it so I can show you guys its current condition and then we'll uh, get working on it. So we're just going to get this old machine set up on the track here, and uh, like I said before, it does run. It just uh, probably needs some fresh oil. Give it uh, about 8 volts of power, and I'll uh, hold this wire on the track. Um, I mean, it, 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 it does run, it's just... I don't know. It's doing it, but uh, certainly room for improvement. All right, let's begin our repair here. We'll get our locomotive uh, upside down there. And I'm just going to start by uh, removing this uh, plate right here. I figure that if we uh, remove this plate, we can probably uh, access a lot of the wheel bearings, things like that, which need to be lubricated. These don't need um, really like an excessive amount of um, oil or anything like that. You know, it's... These are not the most complicated locomotives out there, is, is what I'm trying to say. So uh, it shouldn't be too uh, too tricky to work on. This is certainly a lot easier than working on any modern uh, locomotive. Those ones are uh, way more difficult to uh, open up. And you just made them simpler back in the day. So and as a result, it shouldn't be shouldn't be too hard. I should be able to remove there. So yeah, there are wheel bearings. Those are quite nice, actually. And, uh... Yeah, I don't think we need to necessarily remove these. We can probably just put a little bit of oil on each of them to, uh, improve connectivity a little bit. In fact, I'm just gonna take off the, uh, entire body of the locomotive, just so we can, uh, really, uh, have a good look, make sure everything is in order. So we've got that side loose, and then I believe this big screw right here at the end uh, is what holds everything together. Now I have to be careful here because I do not want to un uh, accidentally separate this from the... See, sometimes this comes loose and you don't want to because if you pull this out, getting all these little pieces of the side rods back in there, it can be uh, pretty tricky. But uh, there it is. What a s I've, I've never seen a motor like this. What an odd motor. Huh. Well, all right. It, uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty strange. Definitely, uh, definitely not the type of equipment I would say I'm uh, used to working on. It's at least a, a decade older than the majority of the stuff I've worked on. The only thing I could probably compare it to is I suspect this is a similar age to uh, my River Rossi Hiawatha there. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's pretty clean. I was a little bit concerned I was going to find old grease and stuff like that, but, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's all in pretty good shape. Really not bad. Yeah, I would like to give this motor a little bit of oil. I'm just not sure what the situation is with this whole screw here. I'm not sure if this holds... Eh, I'll take my chances. Let's undo the screw, see what happens. You have to be careful, though, especially this could have ball bearings. I don't know. 
Don't want to lose the brushes or anything like that. Bloody hell, spells. How many pulls does that have? <laughs> this is a very good motor. But I don't know if I want to move it, because if I pull this too high up, it might take the springs with it. Although those plate, you know, okay, I'm pulling this out. This is the strangest locomotive I've, I think, ever worked on. Let me see, I'm going to hold my finger over one of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is this a seven-pole motor? Wow. I've, uh... I've never seen a local. Let me let me recount. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a seven pole motor. Three, three, one. This is a seven pole motor. I've never seen that before. Very odd. So what I'm going to do now is just take some uh, 100 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to sand away the rust which is on each of these poles. Um, this is not something I do all the time, but rust can really uh, cause. Uh, Basically, it can interfere with the uh, uh, magnets on the motor I found. I found if you really clean these up, uh, it can improve the locomotive's performance. You have to be careful because if you snag one of those wires and break it, or even take the insulation off, it can do damage. But uh, provided you're careful, just giving these a little cleaning is good and I'm using sandpaper you don't ever want to use steel wool steel wool can really be bad for a motor but I had an old Lionel locomotive in it uh, the motor was just in horrible condition and uh, I uh, I couldn't figure out why it was you know I figured maybe the magnets are weak and I looked and each of the poles were covered in a lot of rust and uh, I cleaned up the rust as I'm doing now and uh, now it runs fine. So it was just that rust, which was on the ends of each of the poles. It was just interfering with the magnets. So and you only want to use sandpaper on the ends of the poles. You don't ever want to use, uh, I mean, I guess you could use like a thousand grit sandpaper um, on the commutator, but honestly, I would just avoid it. Really don't want to use anything harsh on the commutator. And this is this is a little bit of a coarser paper. I mean, I could be using something later, but really all we need to do is just get rid of the rust. Well, that's looking good enough. I'm, I'm glad I opened it up. Yeah, I'm going to do something a little bit unconventional. I'm going to take some oil, and you want to put like a really minimal amount, and just wipe it over each of the ends here. It's not like they need to be lubricated, but just putting a really thin layer of oil will prevent oxidization because water and oil don't bond. So if moisture tries to get in here and cause rust, the oil will uh, protect the metal. So, but you don't want to put much for this purpose. But uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now we just need to clean up the uh, commutator. It's not looking too bad actually, but I'll clean it up anyway. Clean up the commutator, I'm just going to use uh, part of a Pico track cleaning sponge. These are really gentle, which is perfect for uh, this sort of job. Let me, let me actually show you really what I'm uh, doing. You just don't want to use anything, you know, too harsh. So now that we've got that cleaned up, we're just going to take this and clean the areas between uh, each of the uh, plates on the commutator and you want to do this with something really gentle like you can see this is super soft because you don't want to create a uh, a burr on the metal which can uh, shave down the brushes so this is pretty much ready to go again so now we just need to reassemble the motor and we've got that all uh, all good actually i'm going to clean up this metal just a little bit with the uh, track cleaning sponge that's a little bit more oxidized than we want it is for the uh motor bearing so we want that to be uh we want that to be good and that's good enough <laughs>
All right, so our locomotive is not looking too bad, I would say. Well, at least as uh, good as this locomotive uh, will look. It's a little bit rustic, I would say, but uh, I, I kind of like that, I'm not gonna lie. It's just uh, got sort of a, I don't know, industrial. It's very honest. That's what I, that's what I'll say about it. Let's, uh, let's test her out. All right, let's see what we've got going on here. We've got ourselves a runner, look at that. Wow. So here we have a locomotive which has potentially sat in a box for upwards of 50 years and after only putting in about a half hour of labor it is running around my layout at speed. This is absolutely incredible. I honestly can't believe all it needed was a little bit of fresh lubricant, a bit of rust removal on the motor and some wheel cleaning. This is just crazy. Um, it's such a cool locomotive. I'm, I'm so happy I decided to uh, pick it up. Seven pole motor. I, yeah, I've never seen anything quite like this and I'm uh, really impressed by it. And I'm sure if we could find a tender for that this thing could work with and got a coupler on it, I think this thing would have some amazing pulling capacity because that seven pole motor probably can produce quite a bit of torque and uh, it's got a lead core, so it's really well weighted. So uh, yeah, this has to be one of my favorite restorations. I had, uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Anyway, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'm sure with a little bit more work, uh, particularly in the tender uh, department, we'll be able to figure out something for it. Uh, but as for now, I want to thank you all so much for watching.